the gospel of the Lord. I don't know how many of us um, remember that today is Modern, Modern Sunday, even though it is written there on the newsletter, Modern Sunday. Um, in this country, Modern Sunday is not, in this part of the world, Modern Sunday is not celebrated as it is done where I come from. This should be a special day. This should be a colorful day, Modern Sunday. We don't joke with Modern Sunday. Not just because mothers are so important. Over there, mothers are the pillars of the church. If mothers refuse to give food to the priest, the priest will starve. Things are run differently here, but back there, it is the mothers that cater for the priest out of their own paws. They contribute, they take food to the to the parish house, to the prayer ministry. So we hold mothers in high esteem. And today is Mother's Sunday. Not, not just because of that. I think God himself has um, placed mothers on a high pedestal. Oh, no, the, the men, you, should, you, you shouldn't be jealous. <laughs> but God has placed mothers on a high pedestal that um, the world literally, of course, the world literally cannot survive without mothers. The world might stand on one leg and still exist without men, <laughs> but not without women. Everything about this planet is anchored on mothers, and this is true. That's why the earth, the earth as you know it, is called what? Mother Earth. The earth is a mother because the Bible even spoke of the womb, the womb of the earth. So the earth has womb and mothers have womb. Have you remembered and has it occurred to you even once that everything you see on the earth today standing on this planet came out of the ground, came out of the soil? Everything, everything you can touch, your fabrics, your carpet, your phone, the metals, Everything, your books, everything sprung from the earth. If you give it a second toss, then you will know how important this is. Everything practically. Um, I think if you talk about the creatures, the creatures in the sea, the fish, uh, they existed there. God commanded them and they appeared they, they came out of the waters. But for everything that stands of the, on the earth was given birth by the mother, the earth, the womb of the earth. Even the Bible recognizes that. In the book of Revelation, when the woman was about to give birth to her child, the child who will save the world, and the, the dragon stood before the woman in order to devour the child. When the woman eventually gave birth to the child, um, God gave the woman uh, two wings of great ego, and the woman was to fly into safety with that wind, with that wing. So when the woman flew off, the dragon poured out of her mouth, the, the dragon poured out of her mouth river, a big river, so that it would drown the woman. But the Bible says that the earth came to the aid came to the aid of the woman that the earth opened her mouth 
the earth opened her mouth and swallowed the river poured out by the dragon, and the woman was kept safe. So the earth is a mother. Imagine what the world will look like if there are no women today. We wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here if not for my mother. You wouldn't be here if not for your mother. The doctors wouldn't be there, the nurses wouldn't, the engineers, no, nobody would be here. We, we, this world will just shut down. If God decides to shut down the womb of every woman just for a hundred years, what do you think will happen? This place will just phase out. Phase out immediately. So mothers are wonderful because just as the earth, just as the earth gives life to every living thing, mothers also give life. Mothers have the power of life within them. Mothers got the power of life within them. I didn't think of any other thing to speak about to today. I was struggling in my mind what, I, what was I going to speak about, but it's only mothers, power of mothers. Mothers give life. They can decide to give life, and they can decide to take it. They can, a lot of children or born children do not see the light of the day because their mothers have decided, you go back there. Mothers. They can do and undo. They, they can uproot and plant. They can uproot. They can plant. They can destroy. They can build. So if you are a mother here, do not underestimate yourself. God has given women. See, I have noticed by experience that God has given women such power that he didn't give to men. That is why, as a man, when I stand in my place of prayer, when I stand or kneel before God, um, on my, before my prayer altar, and I'm praying, I'm praying, and I'm lifting up my hands, interceding for the people, God hears me. But when a mother, when a woman, hear, hear what, understand me, any man that has a womb is a mother, whether they have children or not. The prayers of women are more powerful than the prayers of men. There are certain things I struggle in the place of prayer, but I know if a woman would do the same prayers that I'm doing, it would be a walkover. Because mothers give life. There is a power that comes from the womb of mothers that a man cannot produce. God has given them that power to give life. To give life. That is why mothers should Mothers should pray always for their children. Especially when they, those children are still little, like the children we have in this church, our toddlers, the power of mothers is, is, is inexplainable. Pray for that child, put your hand on that child, speak over that child. Pray for them because mothers are wonderful. They, have, they can give life, they can take life. I know also that when women decide to be terrible, when women decide to be bad, <laughs> there is no end to what they can do. I come from I come from Africa in a place where I when you talk about witchcraft, when, when you talk about evil, when you talk about voodoo. <laughs> When a woman decides to do that, <laughs> the power is devastating. A woman de decides to go into evil. The same way when they decide to do good, when they decide to pray, few of them can shut down the whole community just by the power of their words. I'm opening your eyes to discover what you have that you don't know that you have it. I wish I were a woman. <laughs> And that's why I like to dress. I like to I like to dress in this. And that's why I love to dress in this 
I love to dress in this because it's, it's the, we, the women that put on gowns, you know. So when, whenever I dress like this, I feel I'm a woman. <laughs> so I lift up my hands and I pray. <laughs> this is true. So God has given you blessing. I teach young mothers, before you conceive, pray for the child you are about to conceive. When you conceive and it is certified that you are pregnant, speak to that child. Pray for that child. Encourage that child in the womb. They listen. They listen. They hear what you say. They understand what you say. Pray for your child in the womb. Even while your child is still in the womb, dedicate that child to the Lord. Say, Lord, I give you this child. This is powerful. I give you this child. I have taken my time to study the lives of great men, whether they are pastors, whether they are preachmen, whether they are great men in history. They were people who maybe before their mother conceived them, they spoke to God about them. When they were born, even while they were still in the womb, the mothers would, would give them to God and say, this child will be great. Just speak it and let, and let history carry the rest. Mothers are powerful. I'm going to give you one last story <laughs> of, a, of the power of a mother. Um, it sounds unbelievable, but it is true. A mother um, lost her child a young man suddenly and the child was already taken to the morgue. But this woman was not convinced that her child has died. She wasn't convinced. So she believes this child will come back. So what did she do? She went to her priest or pastor who also believes in the power of women. And the, the priest said to her, do you believe, were you the one that brought this child into this world? The woman said yes. And the priest said, if you believe that you brought her into this world, you can also give him life. So the, the priest or the pastor took this woman by imagination and said to her, imagine that your boy is here, lifeless. Stretch forth to your hand to, towards him and breathe upon him and say, take back your life. It sounds stupid, but she did that. The moment she did that and breathed upon that child, the boy stood up, came back to life. That's the power women could wield when they decide to do something positive. The same way, Women can take back the life of anybody. Don't try this at home. <laughs> Don't try this at home. But I'm telling you, women are powerful. Mothers are great. Mothers are wonderful. So mothers in this church, we celebrate you. We celebrate you. We celebrate you. If not for any other thing, the pain a mother endures during childbirth. Unimaginable pains. They endure that and they still come out and they are strong. They are kicking. What kind of man can undergo that pain and not die instantly out of pain? <laughs> May God bless our mothers. May God bless our mothers and keep our mothers. It is my prayer that mothers will live long, good health, enjoy the fruit of their labors. Even to the extent that before God could save this world, he had to go to a woman and seek for permission. He sent an angel to Mary, a woman. Please, I want to save the world. Help me. Will, will you take my son Jesus into your womb? And Mary hesitated. Heaven was shivering. The whole heaven was nervous. What if she says no? What if she says no? What if she says no? But when she said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done to me according to your words. 
God gave a deep sigh of re relief in heaven. God waited for an earthly woman. May God bless all mothers. And may this week be a joyful one for you. May God take away pains, sicknesses from our mothers. And may they live to enjoy the blessings of God in their lives. Today that I'm talking about mothers, I'm not